Hello and welcome to the anatomy of a Minecraft model lecture number one models and textures. So welcome to this. This is a new course. In this course we will take a look on how we can create our models, how we can apply textures to them, how we can uh, animate these properly. We will also take a look on some 3D modeling softwares in the end and we'll also take a look on how we can render items and blocks using the kind of models as well. However, these first three lectures we won't use any 3D modeling softwares at all and we will see uh, and discuss that further in, in a few minutes. But before I get to that I want to go through some, some technical information or practical information. So to take this course uh, you're assumed to know Java, object oriented Java and the basics of uh, making a Minecraft mod. Um, in the end of the course we will have an examination where, well, basically an assignment that you hand in and if everything works alright then I'm going to mark it as alright and you pass the course, awesome. If it's not alright I'm going to give you some feedback what's wrong and what you will have to fix and then you can just fix that and send it in to me uh, again and I'll mark it again and, and well, it just goes like that. After each lecture, we also have a questions and exercises document. Questions to, well, see if you've learned some of um, some of the uh, parts of the lecture, whereas the exercises are there for, for you to practice what the lecture is all about. Well, let's get going, I do think. But, you know, before we actually head over to the actual models, what I'm going to do is set up sort of a, a well, some some things around it that we g we're going to use to add a model. Of course I could prepare that and just jump directly into it, but I think that's uh, a bit bad because then you don't get the context and uh, you just dive straight in and it's very easy to get lost. So we're going to set up two things first and you should know these things even though uh, it might be a bit of a right eclipse crashed. Um, a bit of a... Um, uh, well summary freshening up your memory again but what we're going to do is create one item that is going to spawn an entity and then this entity is going to have a model because well models are basically used by entities so what we're going to do now is simply create a new um, class here and that's going to be um, item droid so we're going to create some sort of a droid here and like I said uh, we're going to set up an item and an entity and this is going to be quite simple and then we're going to make sure that the um, uh, the entity is being rendered properly and that's what, what the lecture will be about so here we go and then just uh, you know public item droid give it the ID and give it to the superclass like so so there you go um, but we also need some information, so I'm going to head over to item info like that and copy in some information here that we're going to use. There you go, so we have the ID and like keys and default values, unlocalized names and localized names, floating droid is the name and the icon and so on. Like that. Head over here, uh, set the creative tabs, that could be good. So uh, set the uh, creative tab, there you go creative tabs dot um, and then we just put it somewhere I think a miscellaneous is a good place as good as any at least and so un unlocalized name give it the item info dot uh, droid unlocalized name like so here you go so sim simple as that then we need the icon itself so register icon like so I'm going to rename that to register and you should know all of this. So we just an item, then we register the, the icon and put that in item icon like so. Um, uh, sorry, register dot register icon, item info dot, uh, and then we go with, uh, you know, the droid. No, not the droid, the texture. Yeah, like I said, you should know this and so should I, but apparently not. Um, item info dot, here we go, droid icon like so. So there you go, now we have an item there, pretty much. Um, it might be a good idea to save this as well. Head over to uh, a location to create them. I'm going to create them here. Public static item droid. As created with the ID. 
add a name to it. Uh, I can just copy this part here, change the parts I want. We go with Droid instead, and finally the Droid name there. Sweet. Head over to the config handler, and then the item is done. We need this part here. So item info dot. Uh, I can't spell Droid for some reason. Droid ID equals config dot get item item info dot droid key you know uh, that one and finally the default value like so droid default get int minus 256 so you should know, know all of these things that we just done I set up a simple item with an icon we registered everything and set up it in a config handle if you don't know this then you should go back to previous courses and learn those things but there we go just a simple item there and now let's do the same thing for our entity um, well basically uh, the simple parts of an entity so here we go entity droid like that here we go extends entity. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to do a few different things uh, to just create this properly and, and they won't be too many. Of course we need a constructor and you always need uh, the uh, the simple constructor here because what that does is it's being used on the uh, on the client side to be able to to create it there. But I'm not going to use that on the server side. I'm going to use another one. Public entity um, droid like so world and then the the start location here where we want to spawn it's double y double c like that and the reason why I want to have this is so we can well store where we started because well this droid is not going to do a lot at all the only thing it's going to do is move uh, up and down so we can see how movement affects the uh, the model when we create that one private double uh, target y like so so what I'm going to do here is just this world so it's going to call the other constructor and then we just say position x equals x start y equals position y equals y so we store that value there and finally uh, this c value like so so it's fairly simple this part here, nothing too much, but just preparing it, I didn't want to dive directly into well the model itself because then you wouldn't really know um, where we would connect that to our proper code. So so just set up an item here, we set up an entity, uh, and uh, I have a few parts left here. We might want to store the values here, and uh, that's been done like something like this. So we just have start y and then re read it like so. And then we have a similar thing for writing like that. So uh, we write we write the start there, we read the start there, we uh, uh, write a target. So I'm going to have a target and then we uh, read it there as well. And now it's just a matter of setting up a code here for making it move. So so it won't be too much. Well, this droid won't be too useful for anything at all but it is going to move up and down and we'll take a look on how that works with the model and how we uh, make it render properly it's remote so if it's remote then we want to control the movement but we all always want to well update it as well here and this was uh, if you took the course for that the third course the forging minecraft mod this was what we went through in um, um, Lecture number five, I think, about entities. So we just make it move here properly. Motion. See, like so. There you go. And what I want to do here is give it a target. So it's going to move towards a specific target. And if the target y equals zero, that we don't have a proper target, or that the difference between the position y and the target why and the reason why I use the absolute value so I get a positive value no matter what so if we have minus 5 then we get 5 if we have 5 we still get 5 is so I can check if the distance is well 
smaller than, than 0, uh, 0 0.25. And if that's the case, then we want to generate a new target. And the reason why I stored the start position is so we can generate a new target. So the only th thing it will actually do here is move up and down uh, to random locations, like so. So you just randomize the location from the start posi position to a block, five blocks up, nothing more. And then we just make it move towards that. So position Y, target Y. So if we're too far down, then obviously it should uh, move upwards like so, I think 0 0.05 is good speed. Otherwise, it should move downwards. Um, 0 0.05, like so. There you go. So that's pretty much it for this this entity. So it won't do anything to you, it won't cause any harm, it won't attack you, it won't like affect anything at all. You're just going to bump there up, up and down and, and uh, that's pretty much it. But we'll have to register this entity like so, register mod entity, like so, entity droid, I'm just going to call it entity droid here as well, entity droid, to there, steves models dot instance, and finally 83 and true here, just how it's being updated, like so, dot class. And one more step is obviously to make it spawns, so we want to tell the item droid to spawn this this thing here. Uh, and the way we do it is the following. I'm not going to code it. It's fairly simple. We've seen it before. Uh, override tag as well. Here we go. So yeah, I know a ton of things, but we'll take a look. So what I have here is just the on item use first, and that's so so long with so many parameters. We get the item stack when the player uses this. We obviously get the player that is using it. We get the world that we're currently in, the uh, coordinate of the block, the side we clicked on, and finally the, the well the part of that side where on that side that we click. And uh, well, on the server side, what we want to do is spawn the entity. Maybe we actually even want to decrease the amount of uh, items we have because we actually place this droid uh, on the ground, and therefore we don't want that to be left in the stack. So fairly simple. Just yes, create a new droid like that, spawn it into the world, and uh, that's pretty much it. So so far, we haven't discussed. Uh, discussed uh, the models themselves. How do we do the? How do we do the rendering code? But you should hope feel a bit familiar to what we're doing now. I hope you can uh, feel at ease. Um, so so um, you know what's going on. So the reason why I do this, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the models really. What we we're we've done so far. We just set up an item and a entity, but hopefully that makes you feel at home so it won't be too strange when we start to do the actual rendering. And that's the plan. So here we have the floating droid. The icon look hideous, but that's basically, you will see why it looks like it does. And if I click now, uh, there we go, I place the floating droid. And as you can see, it's just a white pillar of ugliness, and that's because we're not rendering it as anything at all. All. But that's our job for this lecture, to make these things actually look properly. And as you can see, they move randomly up and down like that. Let's get down to business and make these work properly. So we've seen this before in lecture, well in course 3, lecture 5, when we work with a spaceship, that we required a few different things. But now we're actually going to make them properly. So what we need is a renderer something that renderer said, and we also need a model itself. So we're going to start with the render thing. So I'm just going to create that in the um, client package here. So class like so. And that's going to be called render droid. Okay. So what do we need to do? How do we create a render class? So as you can see, this is not the model. We have multiple things. We're going to, you're going to see that we have tons of different things that's going to interact with each other. So the first thing we want to do is something that renders it, the whole thing. Okay. So render droid extends render. That's the first step, and that requires us to implement a few things. We need the do render thingy, and we need this weird thing. We're going to use both, so don't worry. But you know, what are these things? Well, basically, it's the X. The Y, the C, like so. We have the yaw, and we have the partial tick t. 
time. So this thing here is basically how far it was since the last tick. You know, you can have a higher F FPS than the tick rate, so obviously we render uh, things more often than we, well, update them. So if you want to use that, you have it there as well. Uh, we're going to take a look on that in just a second. But usually, you do it like this. You don't have to, there's nothing forcing you, but I guess it's sort of a, uh, well, convention, I guess, or, well, just for, for, well, to make it easier to see. What we're going to do here is just create something called render droid instead, where we get an entity droid, so we get the droid itself, and then we just have a copy of all the rest. So we have double X, we have double Y, double C, du uh, not double, float your, and finally float partial tick time, like that. And, well, as you might understand, we don't need that. We don't need that at all, um, because we could just do the code here right away, but I guess it make it simpler to uh, use, and I'm, I'm, I'm usually doing this as well. So we just do render droid um, entity, entity droid like that, and finally x y z jaw partial tick time. Let's see, did that, that correct? Yeah, it should be. There you go. Sorry. And I can't spell, sorry. There we go, much better. And the reason why it works like this is because we need to register this. We need to register that this is the code that is rendering our, you know, our entity. And to do so, we head over to the proxy, uh, the client proxy that we set up in the, uh, low, uh, well, the mod itself. And as you can see here, here we actually do have something already, and that's for the spaceship, like I discussed before, we actually used a rendering and a model when we talked about entities in course 3, if you took that course. Of course, we didn't create them that time, I just supplied you with them to start with, and now we're going to see how we can do it. But as we did before, what we want to do here is rendering registry dot register entity rendering handler, and now we need two things. We need the um, well, the entity itself, dot class, like so. So we have entity droid dot class, and here we just give it the, well, the renderer to, to render this. And what we do is new render droid. So we have two parameters, the class of the, um, let's import those, um, the class of the entity itself, and then a newly created instance of the render code. So that's what we do there, we just register that part, so it knows that, well, if we have an entity droid, what we want to use uh, to render this is something called a, a render droid, we create that new, uh, well, a new instance of that class, so that's what we're doing in there. And therefore it's going to call this method when we want to render it, and we know that we will have an entity droid, yes, because, well, that's the only thing we're going to register it with, so we don't have to check, all oh, right, is this a droid or not, and then we can just hide this at the bottom, and don't, we don't have to bother about that. Of course, we can just do this cast here anyway, since store it in a variable, but, well, usually how it's done is just, we had another method here, we, we, we would do the trick. Of course, not necessary at all, it's just a neat, neat uh, way of well, writing it, I guess. Okay, so now to the rendering. How do we render this? Because this is obviously a method that is being called when we render it. Well, we're going to do similar things with what I did in the end of last course, if you took that, when we rendered models in the um, interface. If you didn't take that course, don't worry, I will well, discuss these anyways. Uh, so what we want to start with is GL uh, push matrix, like so. And what we're doing there is preparing for for us to render everything. Basically, we we make sure we add a, one, a new layer where we can start adding our filters and so on, um, but we don't want to leave them behind. Basically, if you go into like a studio and you want to make your clay uh, sculpture, then obviously you bring out a lot of tools that you can use to make this clay scu sculpture and so on, but you know, when you're done, you don't want to leave them behind, you just remove them. Uh, so in the same way, we start by like like allowing us to to 
work with our own things, but then we want to remove everything we've used in the end, so we just uh, pop it, uh, pop the matrix as well. So we add a new layer where we can work, sort of, and then we remove that in the end. Then when we remove that, obviously we will well remove the tools and so on, but what we have rendered, our finished product, will of course still be there. Just because we remove all the mess that we made when we made this clay sculpture doesn't mean that we lose the clay sculpture itself. We'll still have that so we can use that. And that's what we're doing. We add up a few things when, before we do the rendering, then we do the rendering and then we clean it all up again. The rendering will still be, well, be rendered so we'll still see the, the uh, model. So that's what we need. So inside here we want to do the, co uh, the code we want to use. And what we're going to use here is gl11.gl translate. Um, we can just use, I don't know why, but usually you just want to translate it to floats to, to don't keep it as exact. To be honest, uh, I'm not going to lie, to be honest, I don't know why that's how you usually do it. You could just do translate D and then translate it directly like so. That's, that would be totally possible. But apparently it's, it's well, standard to, to just translate it with floats instead. So, well, let's just obey and do it that way. And what we're doing here is um, the following. When we want to draw a, a, well, a model, the model, we're going to tell the model, you can draw yourself now at the, well, just do that. The model itself is not going to bother about where we want this to be, well, rendered. So it's just going to draw itself wherever. But if we translate everything fast, which basically means, uh, means that we move the origin of the drawing to the correct location, then that means that when we, the model starts drawing itself, we're going to draw that at that location. And the location we're using is X, Y, and C, and that simply means that we're going to render the model where the, well, where we want it to be rendered, and where do we want it to be rendered? Well, where the entity is currently at. So it's going to be rendered in the world where, it's, where, it, where it is, basically. And I haven't spelled draw it properly. Um, right, and, well, obviously we could just do droid.posx, right? Well, yeah, probably, but you know, we could tell it to be rendered somewhere else, uh, not where it, where it currently is. Ba basically, if we draw it in an interface that we saw last course, then we want, didn't want it to be drawn at a specific location. We just said zero, 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 so it wouldn't be translated here at all. So that's why we want to do that. Any code can, or well, should be allowed to specify itself where they should be rendered, with, with what information here. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing here by using x, y, and c here instead of using position x uh, from from the from the entity itself. So that's why we need to use these guys instead, so we can allow the user to uh, well to render it in an interface, for instance, or render it somewhere else entirely. So that's the first step, uh, which makes kind of a lot of sense. We want to render it obviously where we want to render it in the world, but the next like, step is a bit weird. Uh, here you go. Right, so what we want to do is scale the whole thing. And really, we don't necessarily have to do this. But what we're doing now is telling, well, the coordinate system in X and Y should be reversed. By default, uh, you have a, um, if you want to move something upwards, that is a higher Y value. Uh, but we want that to be the opposite, so a uh, negative value is uh, higher up. Why? Well, no real reason re uh, really, but if we do it this way, we're do it doing it the same way Vanilla does it. And that means that we can uh, develop our models in the same way Vanilla does it. Otherwise, we, our coordinate system that we had would be the opposite of the coordinate system that the uh, Vanilla models has. And it's always nice to do it the same way, because then if we're wondering something, we want to check, all right, how is the boat rendered? How is the minecart rendered? You know, how is the creeper rendered? Then we can just take a look on that code and grab some parts from it if we, if we want to, but if our coordinate system is backwards compared to the vanilla, just because we just scale it properly, or well, normally maybe is a better word, then everything is going to be upside down and reversed and so on. So the only reason why we do this is because normal um, vanilla, vanilla models do that, and what that means is that when we make our model, we keep that in mind. 
So if we, well, when we ma made our model, made it upside down uh, compared to vanilla, then we wouldn't obviously revert it here. So not totally necessary, but otherwise we would have to make our models a bit differently. Right, so that's everything we need for, for preparing things there. But the two last things we want to do is, one, bind the texture we want to use. We want to use the texture. Add two, what's the second one? Well, render the model, of course. The model has to be rendered, otherwise we won't see anything. And the, the texture binding part is this one. One, one, zero, seven, 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 underscore B, and then we give it the entity itself. That's what it's called at the moment, but it will probably be renamed later. And what that basically is, is that it loads the texture for this specific entity. And how does that work? Well, basically what happens is that this method here grabs the results from this method and then binds that. So what we want to do is, if we call that method, then we want to return the uh, proper texture in here. How do we do that? Well. As you can see, it says the resource location here. And if you, well, took the course about interfaces, we had that as well. When we worked with interfaces and wanted to load a texture, then that was a resource location. And that's the same thing here. So what we want to do here is private, um, private static final resource location. And then we have a, te oops, oops, uppercase, texture. I'm just going to store it as that. And then you resource location. And what we want to give here is, for instance, example, we'll take a look on why I add this path here, and then textures, models, android.png. There you go. And then we can just return the texture here. So let's take a look why I named it like I did. Uh, I'm just going to grab this folder here. So this is my MCP folder named to these models and we can go into source here and then into Minecraft into assets and um, then we have example so that's why I typed example there because the folder is called example there you go up there um, and then if we click there we have textures inside and there we have models and here we don't have a droid.png why is that well the reason is we're going to create that so I'm going to create the texture live. Yes, because, well, when we make a model, there are multiple things we need to keep in mind. How do we do that and how do we bind the textures properly? And you might say, all right, I'm just going to use Techni or whatnot to bind all the textures and so on. But, well, what I've heard from experience, it's quite tricky to know exactly what to do. Uh, if you don't know how everything works in the end, if, even if you, that's totally fine. Uh, but if you do it, use 3D modeling softwares in the end to to build these uh, models easier. Even if you do so, you still should know how it works because then you know how you set should set it up altogether. I personally, I don't use 3D uh, modeling softwares in the end. I just code it like we're going to start with, but we will still take a look in the end how we work with these. So we'll see how you take a texture and put it on, on a model and that model is going to consist of a lot of cuboids, so, so we're basically going to build it like so. So speaking of the model, we need one now, right? I said we required to do two things, bind the texture and draw the model. We don't have a model. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to create a new thing here, a new class, called something, what is go it's going to be called, uh, model, droid, that seems like a perfect name, like so. And what do we want to do with this thing here? Well, it's a model, and if it's a model, we should extend model base, like so, import that. And that's the only thing we need at the moment. So at the moment we have a render thingy, a render class, and we have a model class. Okay, model droid uh, extends model base. Let's go back to the um, uh, render droid here. Okay, so how do we render this? Well, it's fairly simple. We need we need an instance of it, so we need to create that, and then we tell it to render itself. So it might make sense to have a private um, model droid model. So that's our model, and then model dot 
Render. Nice. But oh right. So what are all of these things? So we have a ton of different values here that we need to give it. The first one is simple, that's just the droid. The second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth and the sixth, they are very weird because they don't do anything specific. And by not doing anything specific, I don't mean that they are useless. What I mean is that they don't do anything specific. When we make a model, we're going to define how we want it to be rendered. Okay? Well, then it's up to you, us to well define what these values actually mean. For a player, for instance, some of these values are used to tell which angle a specific arm is. One is used for the legs, one is used to have the maximum swing of the arm and so on. But it differs b depending on w what we're working with. So they are a bit weird. There are they some bunch of values there that, uh, well, we can use wh uh, whatever we want for. The last one, however, is the... Uh, well, the important part here. So we have the well entity we want to be rendered, but we also have the size we want to render it with. By default, models are enormous. When when you have a model, and if you just would render it in its proper size, it would like take up the the whole Minecraft world. Well, it's infinite, but it would be huge. So what we want to do is tell it, well what should we multiply the size with when we render it and as you can see it's pretty small what we usually use if we want to render something bigger we can just modify this and we don't have to modify the the model at all so here we go 0 0.0625 uh, and that's going to be the size that we're going to render it with but obviously we don't have a model so we need to create the model itself okay public uh, model droid, so let's just add a constructor here. Not, I'm s sorry, that's not how you add a constructor. <laughs> there you go, it's called render droid, not model droid. So keep those uh, part. We have the rendering code, and then we also have the model, which for the moment is completely empty, of course, but it's still there. So here we go. Render droid, what do we want to do? Well, I'm going to do two things. The first thing is obvious new model like that and yeah I'm sorry I don't know model droid there you go so we just create a new model and that's what's going to be rendered so as you can see we just have one single model for all of our entities so even if we have multiple entities they can just share the model and it's totally fine we just render that no matter what and because we translate it correctly there it's going to be rendered where it's supposed to be then the second thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, it's a bit optional, I guess. And what I'm, I want to do is sh set which, uh, which size the shadow should have. So if you have, for instance, a cow on the ground, you're always going to see a dark circle there uh, for the shadow. And, and it's fairly simple for us to just add that. We can just say, say how big it should be. So 0 0.5 is, is a normal, normal one, like that. So now if we start it, we should see a difference. So let's start the instance. Well, I didn't really want to start. I don't know exactly why, it's just slow, I think. Um. Yeah, there you go. I think, yeah, that went better. I just tried again. Um, right, sorry about that. Nothing I can control, really. Um, so now when we have, we have a rendering code, we're registering the rendering code. The rendering code is uh, rendering a, a model and we can't see a thing. 
Why? Well, everything works properly actually. There's not a bug here at all. We have an entity, we have defined which code should render it. In the rendering code, we're, we're translating everything properly, we're scaling everything pop properly, we're, we're binding the textures properly, we're rendering the models properly, the model is rendering itself properly. But, well, why is everything invisible? Well, the model is completely blank. The model is simply nothing. So the first part is done. We register everything properly. We have the rendering code, and that's rendering the model. But well, we need to create the model itself. So now it's time to actually create this model. And what we want to do, um, well, is a few things. We we want to tell it how to render. And a model is basically consisting of multiple parts. When you when you take a look on of on a creeper, you can see the head, you can see the body, you can see the small little legs, and so on. And it, for a player, you have a head, you have head, you have the body, you have the arms, and and you you know so on. The the uh, boat has different sides, and the minecart has different sides as well, and and yeah. So what we want to do there is is create all of these uh, sort of parts and I'm going to store them in an array list the different parts that we do have and these parts are called model, uh, model renderer so basically what we have is one model base that's our actual actual well that our, uh, is our actual model and then what we have uh, later is uh, well, model renderers, which are the parts of the model. So, like I said before, we're going to have a lot of things. We have the rendering code, that's the render here. Then we have a model base, that's the model here. And then the model base consists of model renderers, I guess. Uh, and they are, well, the parts of, of the uh, of the model. So, well, let's just call that parts. Import things there and there you go and what we need to do is define how this is going to be rendered so I need to override the render method that we had before this one here and you know th this was the one with a ton of values uh, the last one was the well the size so I'm calling it, it mold so that's what we're multiplying it with and the first one is the entity so I'm going to call that entity but the other ones are well completely optional we can just do whatever we want with them so I'm just going to call them value 1, value 2, value 3 value 4 and value 5 like so there you go and when that is handled we want to do the rendering and how do we do that well if we have a model and it consists of consists of multiple parts I think it would make sense to render all of those parts and that's exactly what we want to do for model renderer part part so we loop through all the different parts um, that we have stored in that array um, oh, silly shift. There you go. So we live through all of those, and then it's just a matter of rendering them. So how do we render a model renderer, which is, like I said, a part of the model? Wait, we do part dot render, like so, and it's fairly simple. We need to give it one parameter, and the parameter we want to give it is the mold here, so the size we want to draw this at, and boom, we're done. So now we have well have a list of different parts that we have and then when we have those different parts we just go through them when we're rendering and tell each part to render it so we have the render code the render drawer there we have the model base which is the model drawer there and then the model consists of multiple parts the model renderer uh, array list there and then when we render the model itself we basically go th goes through the different parts and render those okay so what what what's left well obviously we haven't made any parts to render and that's basically how we make a model create those different parts it doesn't matter if you use like technique technique to do this or if you code it yourself in the end you want to make model renderer parts that are going to be rendered inside the model so what do we need to do here? Well, a constructor seems like a good idea. Model droid, like so. And first of all, parts equals new array list. 
uh, model renderer. So just create a list there that we can store them all in. Right, so I'm going to start with adding the very first uh, model renderer. And I'm going to store that in a variable first and then add it to the list. The reason why I want to do this is because we want to do multiple things with the model renderer uh, well, when we created rather than just created, and therefore it's easier if we can refer to it as main rather than parts. We will see why it's called main later on. I'm going to have multiple mo mo model renderers, obviously, because we have multiple parts. Model re renderer main equals new model renderer. And then we need to give it this. So when we create a model part, well, the model renderer, we need to, well, supply it with which model it's a part of. So obviously the model droid. Um, so that's what we do there. So that's the first part. Now we have a model renderer, a part of this. But we need more things. At the moment we have the rendering code, we have the model itself and the parts of the mo models. However, each part of a model, uh, model consists of one or more boxes which are called model box. Um, these are basically what you can see. So if we have like the player arm, then the arm is one model box. Uh, the arm is probably a model renderer that consists of one model box. So, you know, what's the difference? Well, the model box is what we can actually see, whereas the model renderer is a bit more controlling what's going on. It's controlling where we can get the texture, it's controlling the rotation of the arm and so on, where the, the model box is just basically the the arm itself. It's not controlling anything at all. We'll see in uh, well later on after the break we'll see uh, um, a difference between these ones a bit a bit further. But what we want to do is add a box like that. We want to add one box to this model renderer. So what we have, let's go through that. Go through that again. We have a renderer which renders everything. That's referring to the model that we do have, and that's the model of, of of our entity, for instance. That model consists of multiple model renderers, which we need to make sure to render uh, when when we render the model. And when we create a model renderer, we need to add boxes to it, model boxes, like that. And I'm going to split up these two parameter. Uh, well, the parameter line there in two, yes, because that's sort of going to give it a, a natural group of these parameters. So we first have a group of three, and then we have another group of three. And well, models are obviously three dimensional, so here we have one value in three dimensions and one value in three dimensions as well. What are these values? Well, when we create a box in a model, what do we need to give it? Well, what would make sense would be the size of the box and its position. And that's exactly what we're going to do. How big should the box be? Um, this box that I'm going to create is going to be a cube. It doesn't have to be a cube. Uh, it has to be a cuboid, which is a, like a cube, but the sides can be in different sizes. So 10 by 10 by 10. So we imagine rendering this as a normal size that's going to give us some something enormous. I think it's going to be like like if you actually would have 10 blocks um, in Minecraft. I'm not entirely sure that it would be exactly that size, but it would be enormous. But when we render things, we uh, scale it so it becomes much smaller. And the reason why we do this is so we can uh, have 10 by 10 by 10, which allows us to have the size at 10 by 10 pixels in, in resolution. So otherwise, if we made it really, really small in like going uh, one by one, by one, each side would just be able to have one color and then we wouldn't be able to modify that. So that's why we create it fairly big, but when we render it, we render it fairly small so it get, gets a, a proper size. So that's, this, uh, that's the size of the box we want to add. All right, so where do we want to put it? Well, the model renderer is going to have a position as well, we'll see that in a bit. and. The, mod the box here, if that's going to be the only box, this is go going to be the only box that the main model renderer is going to have. Well, what I'm going to do is a rule that I call negative the half, which is a very si silly name, but basically what that means is that I'm going to add minus 5, minus 5, and minus 5 there, yes, because the half of 10 equals 5, and 
well, the negative of 5 is minus 5. And the reason why I do this is the following. Take a look on this. If we start adding a box at minus 5, in we just take a look on one dimension. We add it at minus 5. It's 10 pixels wide. Then we go from minus 5, we get to minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we've gone 10 pixels. So as you can see, we start at minus 5, and we stop at positive 5. So therefore, we're going to be in this, well, the center of this box is going to be in the, at 0. Okay? And if we do so in all dimensions, that means that, that this box that we add is going to be in the very center of the model renderer. Okay, so if we add a box in the center of the model renderer, then that box is going to follow along the model renderer without a problem. So in many cases, adding something like this using the neg uh, uh, negative half rule, then uh, the box is going to be added as sort of the only box for the model renderer, or well, be in the same position. But we'll take a further look on that when we discover uh, model renderers and boxes further. Uh, what we want to do next is set the uh, the um, rotation point, which is basically the position of the model render itself. So I know there are plenty of things that we have to keep in mind, but in the next part of the uh, of the lecture, we'll take a closer look on what all of these things do together and how we can mix them up um, to to basically make our model. The final thing we want to do here is simply add the that model renderer to the list list here, the path there, because then when we're going to render it, it's going to be rendered like so. So what we're doing here is that we have one render code, one render class here. That one is referring to our model, the model base. The model base consists of model renderers, which are being rendered like so. The model renderers contain of boxes, one or more, and here we have the main here, where we add one box. The box has a size of 10 by 10 by 10, and we put that at minus 5, minus 5, minus 5 to make it being centered. So the center of the box is at 0, 0, 0 of the um, model renderer itself. And we happen to set the model renderer as well at 0, 0, 0, which means that this box that we have will be in the very center of the uh, model, which will be the very central center of the entity itself. So I'm going to start this and we'll take a look on how it looks like. There you go. Right, there you go. So well, it doesn't look that great, but it, they are not invisible anymore. What we have now is, well, each of these droids consists of one, well, well, they we render one model, the model droid, and that model droid consists of one model renderer. The model renderer that we call the main when we created it, it's going to be the main box that we're going to use. So the model renderer cons consists of one or multiple um, boxes, which are actually what we're seeing. So we see what we see now is that we are rendering the model box of a model renderer of the model base, well, by the rendering class. So there are tons of things to keep in mind here, and at the moment it doesn't look good. The reason is, well, we first of all we just have one box, and second of all we don't have a texture. But we're going to take a look on that. How do we make a texture so it's going to be wrapped around this block properly? And what can we do with these model renderers and boxes? Because at the moment, I don't, well, it's, well, why would we have a floating thing like this? But like I said, that's after the break, so we'll take a closer look on what we can do, how we work with textures, and so on. So I'll see you in about 15 minutes.